screen. Okay, so hello team cup meeting. Here we go. So I think that so first of all, good morning, and I'm so proud of you for being on at 7am on a Saturday morning. Seriously amazing. Okay, um, so I don't want to just be the only person talking on the call, but I'll kind of get it started and then we can start brainstorming collaborating and sharing ideas and, and all that kind of good stuff. But I think that what a good goal would be for this call would be to share ideas that we have for our team cups, to ask questions, everything like that, so that we can kind of be on the same, you know, or not be on the same page, but just share ideas. Um, because I think team cup is such an amazing time to create and gather our coaches um, with momentum and excitement and all towards the same goal of hitting success club, recruiting coaches, that kind of thing. I know that, and it's always fun to earn swag. I mean, who doesn't want to earn a 10 round stay top? I mean, seriously, right? Um, and it's because the tier one prizes, um, the individual reward is a 10 rounds tank top or tee. And if you qualify for success club, everybody gets that no matter what individually. If all five of your team members qualify for success club, then we get a team beach body duffel bag. I mean, seriously, let's get a bag. Let's get a tank top, right? Um, so I think it'd be great to hear how you guys are um, planning to lead your team, ideas that you have for keeping your team motivated, um, how you're communicating with your team, all that kind of stuff. So does anybody want to jump in and we'll just kind of start sharing like your ideas and your system and what you have planned for your team cup team. And I'll just be quiet and let you guys share what you've got going on for your team. Well, I have a couple of announcements. First of all, in case you guys did not read your email with your promo codes, uh -huh. if you use all three codes by February 13th, you get as many as you used replenished on February 14th. So I am going to make sure that my people hit success club six by February 13th. Yeah, I, my coaches were working their ass off last night trying to hit success club, including my daughter. And I said, okay, so now imagine if you had that energy every single day. I know. <laughs> Don't wait till the last day. Like, you know, you got it in you to work hard and be bold. Um, so first, like she, she actually pointed that out to me about the promotion codes. And then I don't know if you've seen this, Erin, but in this Boss Babes Mastermind group that I'm a part of, somebody shared just last night that right now with challenge packs, Beachbody is throwing in a 14 pack of pumpkin spice Shakeology for free. Like people were showing it in their orders. So like if that's the, and it said like, you know, when it's gone, it's gone type thing. I guess they just really want rid of it. Um, but that's like a huge, like, if people were to buy like today, like they possibly could get that for free with their order. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to back you up. So first of all, um, no. Yeah. So this is, so everybody, we all got an email last night. Was it last night that we got the email? I'm trying yeah. last night we got an email. So everybody who registered for a team cup team has three promo codes. So first of all, like making sure that your team sees, the email and that everybody sees the email that they have promo codes and talking about how to talk about those. Um, and, and thinking about even we can make, um, I'm trying to think how I've seen people promote their promo codes, like, you know, one promo code left, two promo codes left, that kind of thing on stories and using that as part of your marketing and your urgency as well for getting people signed up. Especially if you had people at the end of last month who didn't finish their order, like, oh my gosh, I woke up today and I have promo codes that we can add to this cart. Like, that's awesome, right? And you could start today having some of those people complete their carts and whatever, like I only have three people and I have a couple people that are excited to do this. So I'd love to share this with you. So it could be part of your, your discussion, your follow-up with people just this weekend or on Monday. Um, so yes, I think it's a great idea to create some sort of help three by the 13th, use your promo codes by the 13th kind of push with, with all of our groups. And then that way you get three more starting on the 14th. So I think that's, per, first of all, like that's a great focus for a timeline or a deadline for heading success club by the 13th. So I think that's great. Um, so three by the 13th. So I'm going to write that idea down. And then you get more promos. So it's three promos. 
is it ten dollars off? I didn't even look at the promo. I just thought, okay, so it's ten dollars off. And the so so they can get and bar blend challenge packs are still twenty dollars off all month long, correct? Yes. So they can get a beach body on demand for let me let's do this math real quick. So they can do beach body on demand for a year. They can get bar blend unlocked and all the accessories and 30 days of Shakeology or performance for 160, but then we're going to give it to them for 150 if with a promo code. So 150 divided by a 60 day journey is $2 and 50 cents a day. Is that right? 150 divided by 60. Yeah. I like to say that $2 and 50 cents a day for your journey. Okay. I like that. Okay. Fun stuff to think about here. Okay. And then they're going to be set up for the rest of the year, obviously, but that's okay. So that's fun. And then they're also going to get free pumpkin spice. Yeah, it's just, it, I don't know when it's going to be. supplies last kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. But it, you don't have to, I mean, I was reading, it's in Boss Babes Mastermind. I don't know who's part of that group, um, but there was a big thread about it. People are saying you don't add it to the cart. It just automatically gets added to your cart and it's $0. And it was on challenge packs. It wasn't like if you go in there and buy Energize, it was on like challenge packs. Yeah, I didn't even see that in the Breaking Coach News or anything. So I wonder if that's just some kind of thing they just threw in there. Okay. Is there a way for you to like... There, FAQ, there are some FAQs on it and it just says until it lasts. Okay. Like it, they're just getting rid of it. Until the supply has last, it's going to be added to people's carts for free. That's super fun. Okay. I mean, it's at like a 30... I mean, it's more... I think it was like a $50 value for customers. I mean, so it's yeah. a huge... So, um, so we could make a graphic that added that on there because right now I have a graphic that shows, it's like what we use for the flash sale <clears throat> that, so right now, so to, so the value of a challenge pack anyways, $295 of a bargain challenge pack is the value of it is $295. But then if we add 50 more to that, I think it's 50. I, uh, no, I think you're right. A coach price of a... I'm actually, I'm trying to think when we bought the pumpkin spot or the peppermint mocha, wasn't it like 60 or 70, 70, 64.95? Isn't that what it is? I'll go to links and look real quick. Okay. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Okay. So there's just like great, um, confidence in sharing the value. You know, it's crazy. I think um, they, it's 70. Well, I think it's on sale, but the regular price was 74.95. Okay. I was going to say, I thought it was for a 14 pack. So if they add that on there, the value of the challenge pack is $370. I mean, I think it's way cheaper if you just add it to your card in the special offers, but in the quick links. Right. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. If you were just to add everything individually, it would cost you $370, but we're going to be able to give it to you for 150 through a coach basically. Yes. Yeah. And have a free, free challenge group and free coaching in our community. Like their values insane. Okay. Well, that's great. Okay. So that was the first piece of, of knowledge dropped. Okay. And then the second thing you said was, it was just to say, what was the second thing I wanted to unpack? But I have told my coaches, like I shared that graphic with them, like the, um, the graphic that you shared with us, the leaders yesterday like to use that as a tool, not like, don't slap that on your social media and be like, oh my gosh, you need to do this. Like, this is like a behind the scenes communication tool for you. Yes. Any price related graphics you don't want to put on social media. You want to say, here's what, here's what I'm, here's the starter pack. <laughs> Here it is. Sometimes they need a visual. And so this is a great tool to use, but not yeah. We don't want to sound salesy and throw it in. No, 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 no. At the end of the day, I think that the most important thing that as leaders that we share with all of our coaches is that getting, helping someone get out of their own way and say yes, which is, I think a lot of what we're doing is we're helping someone kind of get out of their own head in their own way is that our story is going to sell the experience and not any facts about the product. Right. So I think that's at the end of the day, we have to help make sure that while these are the numbers and the promos and, and all that kind of stuff, that's cool. And that helps make the sale more attractive. 
the biggest part of this is our own personal story and continuing to share that and build that. So I think that as leaders of Team Cup teams, that that's really what we're also helping to consistently make happen, right? This is a chance where we can help everybody share bits and pieces of their story every single day, whether it's on stories or a social media post. So yeah, I totally agree, Jenny. Yeah, any kind of resource or graphic that I ever share in the team page or anybody ever shares that has prices on it, I think general rule of thumb would be, we never want to like be like, boom, 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 put, putting that on social because then all of a sudden we are that person selling stuff. Whereas that's what happens behind the scenes. Yeah, totally true. And if you don't believe about stories, then you need to read stories that stick. I just started reading it myself. I've, it's been sitting on my bookshelf for months. Yeah. And just started reading it. And it's, I mean, it even makes you start thinking, I've only, I'm only two chapters in, but you're like, oh my gosh, I could do this angle of my story. Like, it's so good. Read, like read that with your team cup this week, this month. Yeah. I mean, it's stories that stick and she's our keynote speaker at summit. So Ken, yeah. Kendra Ha, K I N D R A Kendra Ha. She's the one speaking at summit. Yep. Yeah. It's so, I agree. Every time I read it, I'm like, oh, good idea. <laughs> it's so she's so good you, you probably should take notes like I'm already kicking myself because I had thoughts as I was reading about right. how I could storytell so mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah she's so good yeah that's a good and point too I am doing you were asking how we were communicating I'm doing a message strand rather than like a group um just because we're all parts of so many groups so I'm doing a message strand Cheerfit was able to put two teams together. So I actually have all 10 of us together because I just want all of us to collaborate. Um, but that's what we're doing. Good idea. Yeah, definitely make sure that you have a way just for your team cup team to collaborate and to communicate, whether it's a group or a message thread. Is anybody doing anything any differently? I am doing a message thread that I've separated mine into mm -hmm. two different groups because a group of them are brand new coaches and then I've got my veteran coaches mm -hmm. and I just love the energy coming from the new coaches. So I've separated them. Maybe yeah. your friends need that energy. Oh, <laughs> Maybe. it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I, on that same note, I was going to say, I love message strands and I think having like 10 or under in the group is good just to get people talking so they don't get lost. But um, I, I have all brand new coaches to hitting success club consistently. And I think a lot of times we do with our team cup teams. So I'm um, using what we're doing in high achievers club and condensing it down, simplifying it. And um, then we also have for mompreneur, the posting guide for February. Um, did you post that in Fit Fighter 2, Megan, or just in Soaring Strong? I've not, I've not seen just anything not, like it. Okay. I'll I post it. Just in Soaring Strong. Okay, I'll repost what Megan posted in Soaring Strong page, but um, it's a day by day, like what to post. So I feel like for my girls, um, and I really like what Jenny was saying about three by the 13th. Mm -hmm. And I think helping them craft some posts is really going to help, but I just want to keep it simple instead of, you know, working with 10 coaches individually. So I'm looking for any ideas on helping them post with urgency, but not with desperation, if that makes sense. Um, and helping them tell their story, but at the same time being really bold and I am a coach. This is a challenge pack you can get for a month. What'd you say, Erin? At um, two dollars and fifty cents a day. Yeah, um, I don't know if that has to do in a post, though. Yeah, I don't um, think the magical thing comes from from when you co here's my personal opinion. When I think when new coaches show up on social media, I don't think they have to be in, as bold as I do. Okay, because I think that Katie on here can show up sharing her journey and already looks amazing. Yay! And um, she's going to get a lot of love and support, and she's going to have people to reach out to just from that, you know? Um, so I think it's different. I think just, I don't think that, um, I think keeping it simple for a newer coach is just to post on social media and just share your story. Like, I don't think with any kind of strategy or like, I think we make it complicated 
Um, I really do. I think I've made it complicated before. Um, just put, just show up, just show up. Like, yeah. even if it's just like what you're doing today with your family at a basketball game, like just showing up and being out there is a huge start for most new coaches, right? Like I remember the first time that I posted on social media, I thought like the internet was going to break because like I'd never done it before, <laughs> you know, like it was so new. So I think the win is posting whatever it is. I had a coach share with me yesterday. She's listening to the Trent Shelton podcast and you know, I've told my coaches over and over, show up on social media, be consistent, show up every day, show up every day. Like I tilt blue in the face and it doesn't happen. Trent Shelton said, show up and post or be forgotten. She, <gasps> Ooh. That, she, goes, she goes, that was a mic drop for me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm glad that Trent Shelton was the one to tell you that you need to show up in, on social media. But because it's I, true. Yeah. Sometimes we have to hear it from different people. Um, I think that was, um, I want to say it was podcast number three, she said. It was from December. But that was his words, show up or be forgotten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I always think of it as you just have to remind people you're still here. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I have at least two girls that post in their stories regularly. But literally never do an actual social media post. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on that? And they have like 300 plus viewers on their stories. You still have to. I mean, it's, it's all about the algorithms. I mean, it's all about using the social media platform the way they want you to so that people can see you. And so, um, so I personally believe that you've got to show up. If, I mean, I, I don't think you have to post every day if you're seeing really engaged and involved in your stories. Um, and you see the younger generation doing that. Okay. Like that's what I'm noticing. And, um, but we're using our social media as a business platform and tool. And so I personally believe like, that you are going to be using the platform differently as a business than you are for social reasons. Right. And so I do believe that you've got to be more present and out there because people are reading your posts and watching your stories as well. They're reading the posts too. And so I think you should post once a day. And if that's not what you want to do, then at least every other day, because I'm noticing that from our younger coaches for sure. Yeah, because the post, it, the, st the story is, is great. And I think that's just where they feel comfortable, okay? Where we were like, what the hell is the story thing? <laughs> like, I can post all day, but the story, it's just the vice versa of that. And so it's, it, they've got to be pushed out of their comfort zone and say, I know that's not what everybody's doing, but you have a business you're trying to build on social, so you got to use the platform the way you're supposed to well, they, they all started with Snapchat, you know, when they were in sixth right. grade I know. <laughs> and did stories on that since then. And so they just, you know, that's well, it. so like maybe somebody that you want to have them look at is like some, I'm trying to think of, um, like Keisha, like I'm trying to think of like the, some young bucks who are killing it on social, right? Like Keisha, um, and even Emily Faber, like Emily Faber is talking about challenge packs and selling the product in her stories, but on her social media feed, it's all about her family and her life and her values and, and what's important to her and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so maybe that's just like what they need is like, well, what do I put on my post? Right. It might be different, but that's where you talk to your niche. That's where you are. You're just talking about what's important to you, what inspires you. I mean, there's so much that you can do there, but I think it's just a matter of comfort zone and we all have to be pushed out of our comfort zone. Right. I don't know, but I know what you mean. I have people, I have people's like that too. I'm like, I'm glad you're showing up, but let's, let's up it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think getting into people's DMS and um, private messages is huge. If they have 300 people following them, they right. should be talking to those people at least once a week, if not more, um, on their own, about their own content, not necessarily about their workout, leading into the conversation of inviting them. Mm -hmm. um, I think getting into um, direct messages in um, Instagram is vital. 
Amen. Okay. So Lindsay, you're going to share the posting guide. All right. We talked about communication. All right. Anybody, we talked about personal growth and development, um, goals three by the 13th, um, the value of the challenge pack. Um, I think also it's always been helpful in the past for the team cup to have something specific they're inviting to. Right. I mean, I don't, I, it, I think every team differs and all that kind of stuff, but making sure that our teammates know what they're inviting people to, um, is there a certain challenge group? You know, I've seen team cups before host free groups, do fun things, you know, to boost their sales beyond helping beyond hunting success club. So, I mean, I think it's also okay for your team cup to dream big and create big, bigger goals than you normally would as well. And, um, to consider how can you help more people this month? I think that that is something that's worth, you know, thinking about for your team too, is that, um, are we, is our goal to just hit success club or is our goal to help a certain number of people or as many people as we can? Um, so think about that too, because I think it's just a fun opportunity to do something different or do something a little bit more. In the past, we've had training calls where coaches have set really big team cup goals and it's something where they literally make a family goal at the same time. I know this is something we've talked about before, but it's a good reminder that, hey, it's, you know, mom's part of a really cool team this month where we have this challenge. I've set this goal to help 10 people. I've never done it before. And so that means I'm going to be working a little bit more. I'm going to need a little bit more of your guys' help and support. And when mom hits her goal, this is what we're going to do as a family and celebrate. You know, so those are things too to have those kinds of conversations with your team cup team as well and your participants. Even if, if your participants are brand new, I think that saying, you know, your goal is just success club is, is fine. But I also believe in when we elevate people and we raise the bar, they'll reach for it. And so if we set the lid really low, you know, and, and success club's the minimum, you know, um, and just because they've never done it before doesn't mean it can't be done. Right. I mean, it's three people. So, and it's February. I feel like February is an awesome time for people to say yes. Cause that was my yes month because I thought I could do it all by myself for the month of January and everybody kept losing weight and getting results. And I was like, screw it. Okay. I'll do whatever those people are doing over there. Right. Um, so I think it's, it's an amazing time, but consider that when you guys sit down because in the activity tracker, just making sure that you guys are going to use this with your teams, um, that one of the first things you're ha you're doing as a team, um, or at, for yourself is you're setting your goals on there. And so maybe talking about that and instilling some belief, and helping them rise up, maybe help them make a, a monetary goal so they can do something for or with their family after the month because of their income. That would be super fun to, to kind of think about. Okay. Um, so that's something about our free group, the free groups. Yeah. I do think like that's, it's an easy to invite to free and my, my teams have always done like a free group. Um, but I think something that's very underutilized in Beachbody is the Shakeology sampler pack and clean week. Uh -huh. I would consider doing like a clean week challenge because then they drink Shakeology for seven days straight. It's 30, I think it's $29.95 for clean week and the Shakeology. Um, consider doing it something like that because it's volume. It's not success club points, but it's volume, but it's giving people a taste of it. And if they drink it for seven days straight, I, I, if they literally do drink it seven days straight, I think they'll be hooked. So that's just another tool that we have. Um, there's even guides, there's challenge group guides. I mean, everything's done for you. So that's just another option beyond a free group. Yeah, I love it. And to add to that, what, well, what works for me last came from Gina. I'm not, I didn't do a free group last month, but I just invited people for free into my 6 a.m. club to give that a try for a week. And that really worked for me last month. I had two or three girls that came from just doing that, just inviting them for the week to that 6 a.m. club. And they loved the energy. They loved the girls in there and they didn't want to leave. Like they wanted to stay and continue. So that meant they had to buy a challenge pack. <laughs> so they bought the challenge pack so that they could stay in and keep up with us. 
So, and that's a lot, I found it was a lot less work than a free group. Free groups are a lot of work sometimes and just inviting them into our group for a week, there wasn't any extra work on my part other than making sure I really amped up the energy whenever they were in there. Did you give them the sample workouts? Is that what you gave them? The links to the samples? Um, I, well, I talked to them and I just asked what kind of workouts they've enjoyed or what I thought they needed. And then I sent them the link to that workout. And this all came from Gina. This is none of this was my idea. This was all, <laughs> we talked yeah. about this the last Saturday morning and she gave me this idea. But yeah, I just had conversations with them and what they needed. And then I sent them that workout to try. And then they maybe would try that for two days. And then I give them another one. Why don't you try this one? I think you'd like this one too. And by the way, you have access to all of these plus a million more if you buy a challenge pack. Yeah. And the value is so amazing. Gina, do you let them do it all week or do you do three times? It, it just depends on the person. If I know that they're going to, they're going to need a little extra, I'll let them do it for five days. But for those of them, I know if I can push them a little bit more, they'll do it faster. Then I tell them in the very beginning that it's three days. Then I pump them up and put them on social media and send them inbox messages and text messages of encouraging words. Um, it's a little it. bit more work, but it worked for, it worked for December. Completely worked for December. It worked for January. And so, um, we're going to keep rolling with that for now. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it, love it, love it. Um, how do you guys get people on Zoom? I think that's a, something that I hear from people. It's like, I can't get people to get on a Zoom call, right? It's like too much, whatever. They think I put them beforehand. So I'll say when I send the, um, the link that go ahead and download it now because you may have a couple issues. And I'll remind them the first time that I did it, I didn't want to show my face either. Uh, and if you're not comfortable showing your face, I'm okay with that. But you're going to want to show your face because you're going to be pretty hyped before it's over. And of course, you know, I have my pom poms out. <laughs> we dance in. I mean, we do all kinds of stuff to pump people up in the morning. And it works. A lot of the people are not morning people. Like, I, I only started 6 a.m. because you were doing it. And I didn't want to do it. And so uh, people that don't like to be up in the morning, like Siobhan is not a morning person. But she gets up, and if she don't show up, I FaceTime her, and then she gets up really quick. So, it, I mean, we hold each other accountable. If, if they don't see me on there, because I overslept twice in, like, the last four months, and they're like, what's well, wrong? So it, it, we hold each other accountable in that way. It's just not me holding each other accountable. So it's worked. I love yes. that. So the free and group could just be inviting people to your, your work, morning workout club. That's all we do. We, uh, but we do it Monday through Saturday, uh, even though Barb Lynn is not, you know, fully seven days. But the other two days, we're doing like yoga. Just come relax with us on Saturday and Sunday. Nothing intense. Mm -hmm. Just show up so you can get the feel of, of how it works. And for those people who can't do 6 a.m., we always offer um, Sundays at 7.30 p.m. to give them an option. And then a lot of people like in our challenge group um, couldn't do six because a lot of them had to be at work. So I was able to help Jane to get started with a 5 a.m. club. So hers is going pretty well. She's had at least four people with her most, most of the last two weeks. Love it. So the people on your cup, depending on what time they work out, could make it work for them. Correct. And it doesn't, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be all of my people showing up at 6 a.m. It could be Katie inviting people to do it with her at five, and she's got a couple of people showing up to work out with her. So you just use the same Zoom link. So the same one. Even the girls. Um, I'm a part of the the black group. Um, of, of which is a group. If you don't know what that is, it's a group of pretty much all the minority uh, coaches, and so a lot of them join us at 6 a.m. just to. Um, see what it's about and how they can do it for their team and which is it's been working for them um, I've, asked, I've been asked several times to train and teach them on how to do it that way but this method is it's working because me just reaching out to them and saying join uh, get a challenge pack it did not work but for me to say hey girl um, I'm working out tomorrow at six I know that may not be your most ideal time but I would love to have you on at 6 a.m. for 30 minutes I promise you it is just 30 minutes and they can commit to 30 minutes real easy mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Good ideas, you guys. Love it, love it. So yeah, but, the, but Jenny's right, because we do have a lot of tools too. The sampler pack and clean week challenge is such a good idea too. I love all that. Um, okay, what else? 
Um, oh, okay. So thinking about like the structure of your, of your team, you know, how you're going to coach your team, um, thinking about planning calls, power hours, those kinds of things. I think that's something that you want to consider, you know, um, getting on, getting face to face with your teammates at least once a week, I think is really important. Um, especially the first week. Um, and making sure that everybody does have, you know, a game plan and they know what their goal is and that, um, that they do have a tracker, a tracking system that your team creates is really clear about, because really, I mean, the purpose of this too is not only to, I mean, to help people hit success club or whatever, but to help create a system of accountability, I think as well. And so um, that's what that's why we're successful within our challenge groups. That's why we have results in our health and fitness is because we have a system of accountability. And so the same thing happens in the business. So if you want to grow in your business, there's a system of accountability, right? Not just like I'm going to hit success club. That's the goal. How are you going to do it? And then what are you going to do to make it happen? How can I hold you accountable to it? So think about that too, like as a leader, um, and as a teammate, we have to be accountable to the activities that will get us to the goal of helping 10 people or whatever it is, or three by the 13th. And so, you know, within the packet, you also have the calendar. Everybody's going to have their own method to their madness. But if, if your teammates don't have a system, this is amazing. Like you may have a system already, but then but they have the weekly calendar. And then there's also the success club system tracker. So I really do believe that this is the time when you are, you up the accountability for your teammates. If you have a strand or a, a group or whatever, there's some sort of daily accountability for getting in your business activity. Like that is part of it. And I think sometimes we are so hesitant to hold people accountable. Um, but that's what like the high achievers club is for. And we have people that didn't hit success club or enroll to coaches. But when they fill out the form and I ask them what their level of activity was, I'm sure that they were working their ass off last night. Like Jenny said, they were working really hard last night, but did they, did they work hard all month long? Did they invite at least five days a week? Were they following up? Were they doing the tracker? They're going to find their weaknesses when I ask them to fill out that form. Well, in February, we just want to help instill the behaviors and hold them accountable. So think about that for your team too. Like, how can I make sure that my teammates are being held accountable to their activity and that we're doing that? So what do, do you guys have, you know, I know Megan probably has a plan for her team or you guys might have a plan for your team as far as power hours or calls or anything like that. Like, what are you guys thinking? So I sent out a, just a poll to my groups to ask them when would be the best time to do it. I just sent three times that worked for me and they all voted on the best time to do calls, to do face-to-face -face weekly calls. So our first one is tomorrow. Sunday seems to work best for them, Sunday even in the evenings. Um, tomorrow, the game plan for our call is to set their goals and to decide what they want to do for, for the month. But with that being said, a mind shift that I really made for last month, and again, um, Jenny mentioned Trent Shelton. If you have not like listened to him or read his book, find him. Like <laughs> You need him speaking to you every day. Um, but his something that he really taught me was not that you do away with the goals, and we're definitely not going to do away with our goals, and we're definitely going to revisit them every week. But I'm focusing with my Team Cup girls on their standards. What are their standards? Because they can set those goals. And what, I mean, what does that mean if they don't do the activities that are going towards those goals? So we're setting the standard for what they're going to do every day, which is show up every day. So for my old team, we're shifting those standards. We're going to go back to work in this business every day. And then for my new girls, and that's kind of why I separated them too, is because we just have different things that we're working on. Um, for my new girls, it's the standards that they're going to set for their business moving forward, which is showing up every day. Um, in the pods, we're also running it kind of like a challenge group too, um, because I do feel like them being on their own personal journey is the most important thing. And for my girls, I've noticed that they're not doing that. And they're expecting to get success when they're not getting results and they're not showing up for themselves. So we're running these pods like a challenge group on top of the team cup 
but that's what I want them focusing on first is getting their workout in, drinking their shake, being on their own journey. So we're running it like a challenge group. We're showing up with our sweaty selfies every day in those pods. And we already kind of started this last week. And we're showing up with our sweaty selfies. We drank our shake. We shared it on social media. That's like the most important thing that they can possibly do. Mm -hmm. And then this month in February, we're going to start talking more about like who they're inviting, who they're talking to, filling out the trackers, things like that. Um, so that's kind of what our game plan is, but we're going to meet every week. And I know what the topic of conversation on those calls, and it'll just depend on what they've done the week prior and what they need to hear. So that's kind of what our goal is. So, yeah, I love, so, I mean, I agree. The weekly call is huge. It's a check-in. It's where people can ask questions and then you can maybe have an opportunity to teach what you know, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, are you also, or is any, what about power hours? Cause I do think that's really helpful too, when you've got that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. Here's what I'm kind of wondering is like, I don't necessarily, we're all doing the same thing, right? We're all, <laughs> always. Um, but I mean, would it be helpful for us to have team power hours instead of like team cup, small team power hours, where we have the chance to meet with our teams, our small teams, but then there's opportunities to jump on power hours that are maybe like throughout the month led by a different person on the team. What do you guys think about that? I offer team power hours to my team and they don't show up. So I don't, I mean, well, it's not to say they're not doing the work, but they don't show up to the power hours. Well, because you're just doing them at one, a time that you time. would do your power hour, right? Well, not necessarily. No, I'm offering them at different times each week and they still don't show up. Um, so I just, I think they just are working their business when it works for them. Not, not to say it won't work for everyone else, but it just has not been working for me. What does everybody else think? Would it be helpful for us to have some different power hour times that people could jump on? Or would you rather just do that with your smaller team? There's never anything wrong with having more opportunity. I mean, <laughs> right. And to yeah. get another perspective or just to see, oh, there are a whole bunch of people that are doing this. If, you know, if people show up, but mm -hmm. that's what we gotta hope for. Yeah. So. I like ha the idea of having multiple times and multiple days and just encouraging our teams to make at least one a week to get that different perspective and to have that extra accountability. I like it. Melissa, do you have something to say? No, I was just saying that um, in the last two, three weeks, actually, I've been doing power hours every day with um, Cecily and Michelle, and and it's working for us just because the, the time works for the three of us, right? Yeah. Um, and it's been amazing. And and I think, you know, if, if we can open this to more people and people can join, uh, that that's even better. Um, what, what time works for you guys? What time are you doing it? Right now, Cecily and myself, we are doing it at 9.30 in the morning. Um, okay. And that is working for us um, because it's early. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can go earlier than that. It's just like we want to do the workouts and have our posts and everything ready. So by the time that we sit down and do the power hour, we have something to post and we yeah. have stuff to mm -hmm. talk to people. Yeah. But I, uh, that's, but cool. there are people that are working, like they used to do uh, the power hours in the morning during the weekends, but then um, we will figure it out a time in the evenings to, to do it as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to have one in the morning and one in the evenings and let people choose. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, and I know, and I know it's kind of like doing it. Pe sometimes people want to, they need the accountability of, a power, of getting on like this with people and saying, okay, let's work for an hour or 30 minutes and get it done. It's their accountability. Some people don't like that. Different times work, different days for people. So I think it's, I think that there is, it is crucial that there is some sort of power hour that we're hosting or inviting or providing for our team. Even if it's just, I mean, even if it's getting, going to the Beachbody Champions page and doing one of the, what well, they call them action hours over there, doing an action hour with someone on the Beachbody Champions page, like that's perfect too. I mean, so there's a lot of opportunity, I mean, to, to do this, whether it's live, you know, whether it's on your own or whether it's 
doing it facilitated with one of the leaders from the Beachbody Champions. So I think there's a lot of opportunity, but I think it's crucial that no matter what we decide or you decide that it, that is something that's part of our teams is that every week, you know, that you're doing a power, but maybe we're doing one together, especially I think about some of our newer coaches that we have that it's probably important for us to facilitate it with them, you know, to help them figure it out too. So any other ideas with power hours or calls or questions or anything like that? I would just also like to encourage you all as, as if you all are the team captains, captains, even if you're not the team captain to challenge your people. Last week, um, I think on Tuesday, because we had our pod, our message pod together, I challenged them to share a transformation picture because they're not doing it enough. And there were people that shared transformation pictures that had never done it before. Because I said, you want to start the momentum now. You want to start conversations now going into the weekend. Um, so it, little challenges like that, get them out of their box. By I mean, we talked about posting ideas and things like that, but challenge them like, let's all share a transformation picture today. And then everybody go love on them to help with the algorithms and things like that. And just to help give them confidence. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, give them ideas, give them little challenges that you know will help. Yeah, but it, even to just for the team cup to be the cheerleaders on each other's posts, because yeah, sharing that is super scary. And if you have zero comments on it, you're like, oh, I did the wrong thing. But yeah, if you have some love from your teammates, I think that's a great idea too, to encourage that. I love and it, Jenny. all physical. I mean, a lot of us have fallen off our physical part of our transformation. And a lot of it was a mental transformation and just sharing being vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. And, and share, show up. And when you screw up, like, I mean, yesterday it was a picture of me and Lily with a margarita and I swore off margaritas for 60 days. And I admitted that, okay, like, don't be ashamed that when you screw up, people don't relate to perfect. Like, so I put out there, I swore these off for 60 days and I had a weak moment and I had a margarita and tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll start over. Like you just have to be vulnerable and, and let people know you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. eat the icing out of the can and show them that you best <laughs> you do that sometimes like sometimes I eat raw cookie dough <laughs> I don't get sick from it and I just start over the next day like <laughs> you didn't ruin you didn't ruin your results from the cookie dough no. Lily keep that woman in check over there <laughs> hi girl <laughs> she, I, I love that you guys had a margarita okay anyway I'm, always, I, I don't, I'm just kind of mad you didn't invite me. I mean, to be honest, like, seriously, I'm kidding. I'm right here. <laughs> okay, anybody have any questions or ideas brewing or anything that you haven't said that you want to share or ask or whatever? Anything like that? Hey, Anne. Yes. Good morning. Who's, who's talking right now? Anitra. Oh, okay, all right. That's <laughs> delayed, and so I can't, I can't. Okay, hi, Anitra. Hi, sorry I'm delayed. I'm on a slow computer this oh, that's morning. Okay. Um, hey, I was gonna share that I was really struggling getting a challenge group um, going with my people. So I'm collaborating with another coach and the two of us started putting all of our people together. And so this month I'm like, we're you know, I would like to convert these um, these challengers into coaches. So we're doing a share the love um, competition inside of it. And you guys have probably already been down that road before, but with us being new, we are just kind of trying to collaborate. Um, and so because both of us are on a team cup, we really want to generate some business within our own challenge group. So we're going to give away samples. So for any time that our challengers will post a selfie, a sweaty selfie, or they're going to post their food, they're going to post um, maybe something they're struggling with. They're going to earn points within the group, and then we're going to mail out. Even though it's going to cost us a little bit, I feel in the long run, it's going to generate a lot more for us. And so um, the ultimate goal within the last two weeks of our challenge group, we're going to offer if they're going to be a coach, they're going to get a lot more points, right, at the end. And then they're also going to get a nice prize from one of us. So we're just trying to generate some share the love stuff to try to help um, generate and bring people in to, to our group. I love that. I think it's a great idea. It's an incentive program. <laughs> I mean, that's smart. Yeah. 
I love it. So you might even consider giving them points if they invite somebody or refer somebody. Yeah. Which, so I've, been, a, I've done groups before too, where people can like have a sneak peek into my challenge group for a week. Like they can just, cause it's hard to explain what a challenge group is. Um, and like, I tell them like, why don't you just be a fly on the wall for a week and see what this is all about. And then I take them out afterwards. Like they, bye bye. Like, um, but I think that they need to see what that's about. Cause I, you can't explain it. I love it. So it's within your challenge group. It's called share the love. I love cute names too. Yeah. I love it. So something too, that just a heads up, you know, within um, the leadership team, we are discussing some ideas for us in the month of February too. For example, hosting another flash sale and also obviously having another open house too. So those things will happen as well that I think will help you generate volume income, helping people say yes. I don't know how we can offer anything on top of what is already being offered, you know, in terms of like a flash sale, but it's just so a good way to promote it, a good marketing strategy as well. Um, because uh, we can't do any better than $150 for a challenge pack, which is so cool. Um, but it might be a great way to help us, you know, use up our promo codes, you know, so our leadership team will be talking about that. But also we take all ideas, like don't, you know, any idea that you have, share that with your upline diamond or star diamond because we're collaborating a lot um and make sure that you know because even just like nature's idea that's an amazing idea that's something that needs to be shared you know um so but anyway yeah all ideas that you have make sure you share those okay anything else for the good of the order this was really i have a page of notes did you guys get some good ideas okay awesome anybody have anything else Nothing else. Let's all go listen to Trent Shelton and get all pumped up today. Oh my gosh. He's amazing. You know, there is something that he talked about. I know I'm just closing the call, but I'm bringing up a new conversation real quick, but he also has, he talked a lot about, I don't know which call it was. It may have been his third one, but he was talking about, um, shoot some, he had four P's or four A's or three A's or three P's. I don't know, some success system. Um, but one of them was protecting your night. Um, and he was talking a lot about it, the importance of getting sleep and shutting down and just because we can't have a really great, awesome, productive morning unless we protect our nighttime ritual as much as our morning ritual. And that really connected with me. And it made me think about also how a lot of us struggle each day to be productive or to be creative or to even show up for a full-time job, raise children, take care of homes, but also build a business on the side. And a lot of us are kind of running, <laughs> kind of burning the candle at both ends. We feel that way a lot in life. And so how important it is to protect our, our peace and our night and our rituals. And so, but it kind of made me think, and I'm, this is just, I'm going to plant the seed how um, we have this opportunity with a small group of coaches to work on our business activities. It could also be really helpful to have conversations about taking care of ourselves even better this month. Maybe we think that team cup means more work, but it doesn't. It just means being more effective or maybe more productive when we actually do work. And sometimes we are more productive and more effective when we get more sleep and we take better care of ourselves, you know? And so it might even be a good idea as a leader, as a captain to, to continually talk about and instill that practice of we have to get sleep. Like maybe we're going to, maybe you're going to wake up at 4 a.m., but then so please go to bed by nine, you know, and drink enough water and take care of yourself. So when you get up to work out or work your business at 4 a.m., you, you actually can and you're not all groggy. So it, it's just something to consider to, to be that leader that is in someone's ear saying, guys, take care of yourself. Like you got to get some sleep because I think sometimes we think that we have to do more, but we don't. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to check the chat box. It was lighting up. What was going on over there? Okay. Um, oh, okay. Episode six, Ashley knows exactly what I'm talking about. She's like, yes, I can quote Trent, I guess. Trent has a book as well that I got on Audible. What's his book called? I forgot. His podcast is, um, I don't know, it's so good. Straight Up. Is that what it's called? Straight Up? 
Yeah, it's straight up with Trent Johnson. I think so. His, I will say his podcast is better than his book. I'm enjoy, I enjoy the podcast more than I do the book. The book is good. It's called The Greatest You. Okay. But the podcasts are better. I feel like he's speaking from his heart in the podcast. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, you guys. Hey, we need a picture. Oh, yeah, we need a photo. Should we okay. do a photo or a boomerang? Let's do both. Okay. Picture. Anybody can take a photo, too. I know it doesn't just have to be me, but okay. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Now, I'm really bad at boomerang, so someone else should take one at the same time, okay? Because sometimes, like, I, I like, can't do the boomerang myself and not move both hands, and then it's all messed up, okay? All right. So, boomerang time. Whatever you want to do, okay? Whatever you want to do. <laughs> one, two, three. I just moved my head to save it. Okay. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much.